Hi, thanks for coming to our to our webinar. Uh, my name's Matt, um, and this is the second part of our series on what we're calling putting AI to work. And and the purpose of this really is to to show you some practical examples of the ways that we're using AI tools today in our business. Now, this is subtitled jumpstart your LD project, but it really doesn't have to be learning and development projects specifically. We we're a learning and development company, so that's what we use it for. But a lot of the things that I'm going to show you today uh, are really applicable across many industries. Um, so hopefully you get something out of it. And if nothing else, it, it jump starts some some thought processes on ways that you could be using AI to accelerate the way that you do work. So um, now I hid my thumbnails so I can't see them. So my name's Matt. Um, my official title here at Trillium is number one. And so those of you that are uh, Star Trek fans, you'll you'll get that reference. Um, but I'm I'm the director of development here at Trillium. And so we have a, an instructional design team, um, a, a graphic design team, project managers, and I'm responsible for everything that we build here. So nice to meet everybody. Thanks for thanks for joining us. So here's what here's what we're going to do today. And and um, like I said, I promised only a couple slides. This will be the last slide that I show until the very end. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use chat GPT to accomplish some very tactical things today. We're going to create a project schedule. We're going to create some learning objectives and we're going to create some client communications automatically. And so what I'm going to demo today, if I were to hand this to my team, I would expect this to take at least a, a day's worth of work, if maybe even a little bit longer if they need to do some research or or fine tuning. And so we're going to accomplish a lot of things very, very quickly. Um, one of the caveats that I want to throw on this, and, and we mentioned it last week's webinar as well, is that AI is not going to replace anybody's job yet. It is it is it is a tool to be used like a calculator or or um, a, a computer. It needs the human interaction. And so what you're going to see today is something that is able to augment and accelerate a workflow, but not replace people. There's always going to have to be the people component that go in and really make the deliverable what it needs to be. So don't think that what I'm showing you is going to be the end all be all and and make this absolutely perfect. So let me switch over here now real quick. I'm going to stop sharing for a second and share out my uh, chat GPT window so everybody can see what I'm looking at. OK, so what I've done is I've pulled up chat GPT and today we're going to be using uh, chat GPT 3.5 um, 4.0 released day before yesterday. It is. Um, it is a pretty significant advance and I've been doing some testing with with 4.0. You're going to get much better results with 4.0, but because it's still really in a, a beta or alpha state, you can only make so many queries per hour and the speed of it is not is not super uh, fast, not as good as 3.5. So to illustrate what I want to show today, 3.5 is going to be good enough, but once 4.0 comes comes up to uh, up to snuff and and really matches the speed of 3.5, you'll you'll get better results there eventually. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with we're going to start with defining a project, <clears throat> and so let's take a theoretical project. Um, we are uh, an agile company. We use agile sprint cycles, and I have project managers that are agile certified. So we want to jumpstart our, our development process for a project schedule. So the first thing that we're going to do with ChatGPT is, is set the context of what we want it to do, because it really doesn't know the context of what we're going to be asking. So I'm going to start with saying, I want you to act as an agile project manager. So now GPT knows, OK, I have I have some constraints here of the types of responses that you want, and I found that it always helps whether you are asking questions about taxes, whether you're doing instructional design, whether you're in project management is to start with that initial opening phrase of I want you to do this and that that sets the context. So now let's let's literally just go into what um, what we want to create. So I'm going to say I need you. Uh, I need to create a project 
schedule um, for a client. Um, the project will start next Monday, which is 316, no 320, and finish by May 31st. Okay, so now we've set the we've set the scope for it. Um, we will be creating a learning project. Um, and it will have, we'll say, eight modules. Now, one thing I want you to note is I do have some of this written up as a as a flow of what I want to demonstrate, but I'm not copy and pasting. I haven't tested this. I don't know exactly what the results will be, and sometimes they're a little bit different every time, but you're going to get to see the creation process in its, in its entirety. So we're going to have a learning project. It's going to have eight modules. Um, and let's say each uh, module will be one development sprint that lasts for one week. So we'll do one week sprints on the development. After a sprint is complete, we need a week of quality assurance to review that. And I want this to spit out, let's say, make a development schedule and um, let's make a development schedule and uh, for me in a table format because I want to be able to copy and paste this into Excel. So let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. So immediately it comes up with the, uh, the table format so we can see it's really straightforward. We can see all of those individual pieces. Um, and we can see it shows me exactly module one, when it starts, when it ends, and then it goes into a, uh, a QA review that is, uh, well, it assumed that it's gonna be a weeks of QA time. And then we can see as soon as the sprint ends, the next sprint begins, which is pretty good. The QA is a little bit long though. I don't need a full week of QA. So I can say rework the schedule to be, uh two days of qa because I, I don't need my qa person tied up for all of that time so it knows i'm going to go in and see it aligns exactly where it starts that qa cycle at the end of our sprints adds two days of time and and spits it out so we can go in and um, modify the request that we've given it already. If we don't get a response from it that we think we want, we can ask clarifying questions. We can add information to it and just build on top of it. Um, it also remembers everything that we've done before. And so all of this previous input, it has a history in this one individual chat. And so when you ask specific questions about this context, it can fix that for you. So let's say I wanna assign um, two instructional designers to this, which means we can double up some of those modules. So let's say I'm going to rework the schedule. Um, where all even no, let's do it this way where modules one and two three and four five and six seven and eight are done synchronously So we can see that it has gone through now and it has paired up each of those sprints and figured up what those dates are. Um, now, one of the things that I want to call out here is that um, your output is as good as your input. So I don't want to take this just at face value. We can see that there is a little disconnect here where this sprint ends on the 9th and the next one starts on the 17th which means we've lost a week in there somewhere. It's still giving us the same end date. So while, while this can accelerate our process significantly, it doesn't always get it 100% correct. And this is where I'm talking about that you really need that human interaction to show up and go back and vet this information. 
So let's see if let's see if we can fix this. Um, you made a mistake. Um, the modules should start when the previous sprint ends. So let's see if this fixes it. Uh, we we went back to our original where it it's not doubling up our modules. So again, I haven't scripted this whole thing out. Um, I think that there's a way to do this. We're going to move forward because I don't want to run out of time here as I as I want to show you a few other things. But we could ask it to say all of the even numbered modules are done simultaneously. All of the odd numbered modules are done simultaneously. We could extend how much time is given for each of those sprints. Um, we could set an earlier uh, completion date and it would automatically adjust the times for us. And so my goal here is for my project managers at least have a template schedule to start with and then modify it as necessary for the client. Now let's talk about the next steps, which is which are things like planning hours, costing out how much it's going to cost me internally, what I can build a client based on what's assigned here. So we will say um, I'm going to have two instructional designers. Designers. We'll call them Phil and Dave. Phil will do the even modules. Dave will do the odd modules. Um, each will work a 36 hour a week. Um, Dave's fully loaded cost, the cost it is to me to keep him employed is, we'll go $35 per hour. Um, Bill's fully loaded cost is, we'll make him $37 an hour. For both IDs, I will bill, bill, bill the client $65 per hour. How many hours will each ID work? Sounds like a math word problem as we're going back to uh, middle school. How many hours will each ID work? What is the cost to me? What is the cost to the client? Um, present in table format. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to assign the modules to who's who's on point for it. It's going to show me how many hours they have. It's going to show me what the cost is to me of each of those people. It's going to total those up and it's going to spit out that that final cost. Now, could I have done this in Excel pretty easily? Yeah, I can. And I can take this table and literally copy and paste it and send it and paste it into Excel. But what it does is it's starting to give assignments as well. Um, and so we can know who's going to be assigned to what, and it starts balancing my workload as well. A couple more roles we want to add in here. Um, I'd like to add Annie as the project manager. She will work four hours per week for the entire project. I'll bill her at 60 per, whoa, 60 per hour. And I will add um, Kate as our um, quality assurance person. She will work two hours per week. Um, her cost is 34 per hour, I'll bill her at 50 per hour. We work the schedule, assignments, and costs. So now we're adding in a few extra people. We can see who is assigned to what, we can see the sprints, we can see the costs. Right now, it's just doing the IDs. Let's see if it sticks in uh, Annie and Kate here at the end, um, or else I may need to tweak this a little bit.
So there are my numbers. It didn't put it in the table like I would have liked. That's OK, probably because it's broken up by modules and sprints. But I do see that here is exactly what I'm going to bill to uh, the client um, overall for the project and the individuals of what I'm going to bill for people. Um, so it really is giving me a lot of great information here around how I'm going to how I'm going to project and put it together. OK, so let's move on to the next piece where I know what this project is. I have a general schedule here. Obviously, it's not perfect in the in the interest of time. I want to keep going. I could ask chat GPT a lot more questions and really get this dialed in to be exactly what I want it to be. And I'm still getting some really great efficiencies overall. Um, but I want to move on so that we don't lose time. I want to show you how we create some learning objectives as well. And so for us in the L&D industry, learning objectives really are the, the blueprint or roadmap to everything. So now I've got my my uh, schedule planned. So now we're going to change chat GPT and um, let's create a new chat entirely so that it knows it's no longer in the project manager mode, but it's in the instructional designer mode. So now we're going to say, I want you to act as an instructional designer. And it'll say, OK, I can do that. I am creating a learning program for new managers. I'm going to call out who my audience is, because within a learning objective, I want to identify my audience, the behaviors that I want them to do, the, the tasks that I want them to complete, how I'm going to make sure they completed it. So I'm going to go ahead here and tell ChatGPT. I'm creating a learning program for new managers, um, and I want them to learn the aspects of emotional intelligence. Create five learning objectives based on Bloom's taxonomy. If you're in the learning industry, Hopefully that gave you goosebumps of excitement. Um, five learning objectives based on Bloom's taxonomy to help these managers learn how to recognize. And uh, let's let's do three things: recognize, implement, and practice emotional intelligence. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through and actually it knows what Bloom's taxonomy is because we've told it it's an instructional designer. It has the background of websites uh, and content since uh, going up to 2021 have been loaded into chat GPT. So it has the context around what we're trying to do here. It knows what emotional intelligence is um, and it's going to say here are the levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Um, we've only created five of them, so we we don't go up to the the uh, all of the levels here, but we do get all of the major ones. So we'll create quizzes, we'll develop some case studies, we'll do some role play exercises, which are interesting. Um, we'll have the an managers do some self analyzation of their emotions, and they'll create their own plans. So, are they complete learning objectives? They're not, but they at least give us a structure and point us in the right direction of where we want to go. We can ask it in each of these specific instances to give us more details around it. So let's say this this role play exercise is really interesting. We can say, um, give me some scenarios. For number three. And what it's going to do is it knows that number three is the role play scenarios around emotional intelligence. It's going to give us some examples of ways that we could do this as a workshop and let people play around with it um, and um, give us some some ideas. If nothing else, this is a great idea generation tool to say, oh, I can jumpstart some of my my development processes within this. So my overall goal is how do I make AI work for me and accelerate what I'm trying to do? Um, we could go through here and say um, we have called out the managers. Um, 
maybe we want to say, what are the conditions for each of these learning objectives? What are we what are we given? We'll ask it to rewrite the learning objectives, including the conditions for, for success for each step. So it's going to go in here, and in this case, it it's um, it assumed that the conditions instead of the environment, which is what I meant, was what's the environment that we want to create? What are the things we give them ahead of time? It's actually going here in here and assigning what is it that we know that they've successfully completed those learning objectives. So we can go in and continue asking questions, continue building on what we've already given it to have it refine more and more and more. So then the last thing that I want to show you is we can use this not just for our internal setup and launching of projects. We've created a schedule, we've written some learning objectives, but now we can talk to the client about what it's going to be. I'm going to switch back over here to my uh, project manager example. And in this one, I'm going to say, let's get rid of that sidebar so we can see it a little easier. I'm going to say, uh, create a client email that describes the project, the goals, the schedule, and the cost. And so what it's going to do is it's actually going to give me a subject line. It's going to draft the email for me. It's in some pretty formal language, um, so we might want to tweak that language a little bit. But it does really spell out, here's what our project's going to be. Here's the duration. Here's what the cost is going to be. Mm, now I just noticed something. It's including the costs of um, what I'm paying my employees, the fully loaded cost, and not necessarily the cost to the client. So we want to fix that. Um, rework the email to remove the fully loaded costs and include the cost to the client. Again, don't want to take it verbatim, but we want to go through here and say, OK, let's tweak it a little bit. We see where those errors are. It's going to uh, call out here exactly how much we're charging for each of these, um, how much time each of our instructional designers will be spending, um, how much the instructional designers. Um, oh, we don't have Annie's rate in here. It's 65 per hour. Include that. So there it goes. It goes in and adds that in. So just to just for a quick summary, and I will uh, I'll flip back over here to my uh, PowerPoint presentation real quick because we only have just a, a few minutes left and I I do want to uh, respect respect your time is we did go through obviously not perfect in a short amount of time to create that project schedule, create some learning objectives, create that communication. But my goal here is not to show you exactly how to do it, but give you some ideas on how to augment your workflow, how to accelerate uh, the things that you'll do. Because what I've done here in about 20 minutes um, probably would have taken a significantly longer amount of time. I'm still going to have to invest some more fine tune and clean up these deliverables, but it's at least got us started and headed in the right direction. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of information around ways that you can use AI. Um, if you want to go out and practice yourself, you could go out to chat.openai.com. Go ahead, sign up for an account. Um, it is free and, and you can do everything that I've done uh, free. Um, absolutely no cost to you whatsoever and play around with it and experiment. See what you can do, and hopefully this has generated some ideas for you of things that you can use it, uh, ways that you could use it in the future, things you can do with it to to streamline or at least create some some ideas. Um, we're going to be doing a post today, um, another post leading up to our workshop next week, which is how we draft content, um, and I'm going to give you an example of how I drafted um, a half day emotional intelligence workshop 
with all the content necessary, role play scenarios, things like that. Did it in about 15 minutes. Um, I used chat GPT-4 for that one, but I will be demonstrating that next week. We'll also show some things about how you can upload documents into chat GPT. If you have a 20-page a case study and you want to summarize it, create some content from it and write knowledge checks, we'll get that started as well. So feel free to join us next week. Um, and uh, hopefully you enjoy playing around with this. We will send you a follow up email with this recording, a summary of some of the things that I shared, a survey to give any feedback about what we've what we've talked about or things that you want to see in the future, because we'd love to share our experiences with you. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Um, uh, you know, taking time out of your day is always a is always a gift to us. So thank you. Um, hopefully you got something positive out of it, something good. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll see you next week. So thank you very much.